investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 8th of August. Uh, quite an exciting week I think we're going to have here. Uh, the objectives we had based on the Chapman Wave methodology, I've been discussing it live here every single day for weeks and weeks and weeks, is that in the Chapman Wave methodology, once you get a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode, the implication is you should get at least four higher peaks, alphabetized, peak A, peak B, higher, uh, high, then higher high becomes peak C, and then a peak D. You can go all the way to E, F, and G. You get a chapter wave instant restart at D. D is your objective. Other things can happen at D. Most importantly is you measure, you take time measurements, you take price measurements, you get bar symmetry, a whole bunch of things. And if you look at this particular chart right here, uh, I think I've got it better on a different chart. It doesn't matter. What we're looking at is that 200 period exponential moving average, this orange line, which you didn't have to even care about until it came into focus, uh, was out of focus when we were down at 29,653 on the 17th of June. And look, here we are practically touching it. I think we're within a couple of points at 33,109. 33,162 is the 200 period moving average. And it's made, it's, it's, all our objectives have been hit for this particular phase. In the Chapman Wave methodology, which I'll be explaining and going through in very, very great detail, this is just a perfect time because all the things that we are talking about are unfolding, as well as that digestive phase at that peak D, uh, the resistance that you would expect at uh, to the 200 period moving average, all these things we've been talking about live every single day. The fact that the on balance volume, this little blue line here, has been kind of okay, but not good. And the relative strength, the gray line has been very good. The uh, stochastic is really strong and flat. That's a really big positive, 89%. The MACD is good. The 90 is way above the 14. All of these things we've discussed in great detail. And here we are, we get an over, over the weekend. Uh, a boost to the market and all of a sudden you're looking at weakness that was there Sunday night going uh, into early this morning turns around and we get this big spike up 260 points in the Dow at 33,066 I said that the area of the 33,000 um, one kind of 70 33,250 is going to be really important because once you go to 33,300 it means you have arrived you are now above uh, the resistance levels, you're above the 200 period exponential moving average. Other times it's been there and failed. It, April the 21st, it went to 35,492 and got a peak E and it failed with the same pattern that we're looking at here in terms of the notation, but a very, look, this is what I'm going to be teaching. Look how easy you can use. You put on your indicators and you don't need them at all until you need them. And when you need them, they're right there. You do a vertical test of what I did before. I said the high that was made on the Dow at 35,372 back in March was very strong. Then we made the cup formation with an alternate count. It went to E slash B. Um, and I, I said the measure says that this MACD could deflect lower. Stochastic's way down in the 48, 52% area. Um, and the on-balance volume's fading. This is not good. And then we turn around. Look what's happening here. The MACD is strong. The stochastic's fabulous at 89. Anything over 80% is good. Anything over 80, 86% is pretty good. In the 90% or high area is fabulous. And here we're at 89.38. But the on balance volume is just suggesting we, you know, it's struggling a little bit. Still not bad, but struggling a little bit. So it means it's a holding pattern. And remember, I'm going to be teaching about magnets. What is a magnet? A magnet is something that when the outer bands of attraction or repellent um, are inactive because it's just too far away. It doesn't mean a thing. But once that piece of metal or whatever, in this case, the price gets closer and closer to the magnet focal point. In this case, in the Dow, it's 33,000. What did I say before? 33,162. 
it becomes an attractor. It just pulls the price in. And then if it just gets close or even touches it, it can now start to say, okay, are you going to be able to continue to attract me or are you going to repel me? And then if it starts to break above it, now all of a sudden that line has become a, a, a propellant instead of a repellent zone. How long can it be that? Because you have to really get far away for you to be able to dismiss that line as an attractor. Okay, so those are the things I'm going to be talking about. And we've got the same thing in the S&P. I, I don't want to go to the weekly chart just yet. Maybe a little later in, in the show I will because I've had a ton of questions. I, I want to get to one 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 person who, uh, Paul, who kept saying to me, watch NVIDIA, watch NVIDIA. I watched NVIDIA and I said, so far NVIDIA is acting very well. Uh oh, I got a problem here. Don't do that. Let me see. Yeah, I've got a problem. So, uh, data, remove, close. No, no, no. Oh, I don't need any, any troubles today. I uh, just get rid of it. Remove. Okay, here we go. So the S&P is right on the 200 period moving average. But you see the five bars, it's actually almost six bars. They go closer and closer before it touched it today. That is important because that's, instead of being a, uh, a the third third rail repellent, it's become a very important attraction. And that means any pullback, unless it's so severe that it takes the 40, uh, this is the S&P cash, 40, 70, 14 period exponential moving average uh, support out. This should be we should be hugging this and going maybe choppy 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 until the Fed speak on Wednesday. I think we might even have seen maybe we've seen the high for the next two days, maybe even two and a half days. I don't know, but this is the way I'm looking at it. That there's a lot going on here that says money is coming in because it's been forced in, but it's this rotational aspect that is so important. I'll get to that in a moment. Just let me show you a couple of things. So and that's the SP. Look at the QQQ. Same thing. The 200 period moving average back in uh, March, April was a repellent at the 373.83 level, comes tumbling down, has a bounce, and that 330.29 level, that may high before it kept going lower to the 269s. That's my left side, right side price time match. And we are a day late in getting to 330.29. Uh, the high today is 326.47. So let's see. It's got two days to go. Oh, no, it's a day early. It's still got two days to go. And that's using a plumb line. That's a movable plumb line. The, ver the, the, the symmetry of the bars on the left is the bars on the right. Now, this is going to be very important. I'm going to go to the gold. And I'm going to show you that gold is up nine, almost ten dollars at eighteen hundred. One of the reasons why we wanted to go long a gold, one of the gold positions, actually our best gold position, we're not in, even though it would be up beautifully right now, just because kind of circumstances just prevailed that didn't allow me to uh, do what I wanted to do. Um, and anyway, but we have a gold position, and that's actually starting to do very nicely. But most importantly, it's only because there's the rectangle formation. That's what I'll be teaching on Wednesday. You've got yourself some symmetry right to that low bar. We've got another two two days, maybe two, two to three days to go to get the symmetry to the low, to the exact plumb line low. Uh, and that just says basically that what we're looking at here is that gold is okay. It's not doing great right now. But it's definitely in play because if you look at the dollar, the dollar is starting to be inverse. It's just starting to struggle here. It's continuing with digestive pressure. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman does a two fifty six. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, 
Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're back, the Dallas of 264 is so 33. I just let me finish with that goal. So the GDS, we are along the GDS. The GDS is trading at 27.06. It's in a leg B. I've got this beautiful cup formation that's forming. I've got the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. I've got a left side, right side price time match, which says going to the low that was made at 24.38 on the 23rd of July. These are the techniques that I'll be teaching. Uh... It should go sometime, is it this week? What is the end of the week? So that's the 11th. I would say that it's got all week to try to get to the left side high of 2761 um, in this left side, right side price time match. It's like a bar symmetry that we're looking at. And if it's able to do that this week, all of a sudden it's, it, it negates the rectangle potential because if there's, if there's a turn down, I'll show you, I hope I can find it, there's a chart that's just done this beautifully, where it looked like it was going to break out and instead it went right back into this uh, narrow rectangle formation. So that's going to be really important because on any day this week, if there's a gold failure and gold pulls back so that the GDX, the gold miners pull back below 26, that's going to say, you know what, it's still not ready. It's not breaking down. And then individual gold stocks will do really well. But overall, it isn't doing what it's supposed to be. It needs to be in the 28th by, actually, I, looking at this as the first hour of trading, not even the first hour of trading in the week. I think if you've got all week in which to do it, 28.65 or higher is really what you want to see in the, in the, in the uh, GDX. Um, if you're looking at the silver, SI had a very strong move. Uh, it's not yet in leg C. It'll get your legs see the high of 20.510, 20.49. Yes, yeah, so 20.510. That was the high of the 1st of August. Today's high is 20.49495. So it's really close to starting your legs see. And that would say to me that just based on the chart formation, that silver, in some ways, there's this one to one to the downside that it accomplished in the monthly chart. In some ways, 
silver is acting a little bit better than the actual chart formation of, of the GDX. Not necessarily gold. Let me just check the gold. No, actually, it's acting even better. It's acting better than the gold chart itself. So silver, in a sense, I mean, it's just, you know, it's not as many stocks as, as gold, uh, but it's acting well. Now, I wanted to do this. High-grade copper. High-grade copper is acting well. It's not great, but it's acting very well from the low that was made at the 3.1 area. It's at 3.59. And my, my contention was uh, a little while back, that within the rectangle formation that's trying to form some kind of a lopsided cup, that's a long way to go to go to the 3.85-ish area, um, and we'll see what happens. But this is good that it's actually moving up, and uh, if it can get to 3. Point, oh, anywhere in the 3.60s by tomorrow, actually close in the 3.60s anytime from today. That would be a really nice move just on the short-term basis in copper. I want to also show you something here, the TLT. The TLT is pulled back from that peak E with a one-to-one, -one, just did a beautiful one-to-one, -one, uh, left side, right side, bar symmetry. And um, it hit the 120 area, dropped to the 116s, and now it's at 118, up dollar $1.80. $1 the weekly chart is slowly improving. When you see the way the, the MACD, the stochastic, are rallying, and the nine period hasn't yet crossed positive. It says, you know, just for now, uh, I don't see anything other than a trading range for bonds. And the one thing I'm missing right now is just to quickly look at crude oil, which was sitting on the 200 period moving average for the third day in a row. There's the dreaded H pattern. It went to a lower low, and it's hitting. The, this is going to be the magnet area of the 200 period moving average, and the weekly rectangle. This is like the inverted H formation. Right, instead of the cup, it failed at a peak C instead of getting to a D, and now it's pulling back. These are the patterns. Look how simple these patterns are to 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 to, uh, to, to maneuver with. Um, and most of the time, I'm doing nothing. I'm just pointing it out to you. I've just got these things sitting there, and then I draw in the rectangle, and then I just sit and wait because you've done the homework. Homework says if you're showing borders that aren't being broken then you're in a trading band. Okay, it's just real simple things. Now, a couple of things I want to do. The question was, so I, Paul last week was saying, Sema, watch NVIDIA, watch NVIDIA, watch NVIDIA. Well, the semiconductors are down 2.20 today, 241.44. Uh, I, I should mention that for disclosure purposes, we've been long the SOXL, which is three times long. Uh, let me just show you that right now. So we've been long, started positioning at 17, taking a little bit off, it actually hit 22. I mean, that's a huge percentage gain. Uh, and we took a little bit off at the open on Friday, and then it pulled back, and now it's pulled back again with the NVIDIA news. Well, wait a minute. NVIDIA is really a – how can I put this? For years, NVIDIA was the star of the semiconductors. They were just in what was what was needed was what NVIDIA could produce. And then all of the, this is, I haven't changed the notation. This is when it was pre-split. So that was 202.76 October in the monthly chart of October 218. In real life, that was something like 40, $43. <laughs> so uh, this is, this is pre-split. Um, these are huge gains. And then it took a, a terrible tumble. The weekly char monthly chart, in fact, I really have no choice I have to put a down arrow to say it's in a sell mode in the monthly chart. The weekly chart is in a sell mode. The daily chart went to a peak C, and then um, it, it went from 100, around about 140 all the way to 192-ish. Well, that's a huge gain. I mean, that's 50. That, that is a big gain. And then today comes out the bad news, say the, you know, the, the earnings were disappointing, etc. So what we are looking at here is that. NVIDIA has pulled back, but there are so many others. Look at this, Marvell. Have I updated it? I'm not sure. Yeah, Marvell did a peak C, like the semiconductor. looks like the semiconductor chart. Um, and holding down $1.38 today at 55.56. When, when you've got bad news like this in one of your leaders in the semiconductors, it says there's been a rotation going on. Something else is happening. Advanced micro, advanced micro devices went to a peak D right above the 200 period moving average. And for six sessions, it's been stuck in this range. It can't get out of that range. It's at 100.67. But it also says, wait a minute. In this particular phase, there are other areas in the semiconductors that have taken the lead. I'd like to just look at Intel. I haven't looked at that for a little while. Intel is acting horribly. 
So Intel's in the area uh, saying, whatever is needed in the semiconductor area, once again, Intel has done the wrong thing. It's almost like IBM. It's almost like a couple of stocks that just always do the wrong thing. So that's Intel right now. I wouldn't be surprised if later in the year Intel has a decent rally, but it is now. So thank you, for Paul, for that headline uh, that you kept saying, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. And you're absolutely correct. But my contention is that we are, we are now looking at that rotation within a sector that's saying, oh, wait a minute. That 200 period moving average of 244 in the semiconductor daily chart is so strong that it's acting like a like a magnet. Even bad news, which should have just knocked them flat, is making them hold well. The weekly chart has broken out of the chat rate inside track repellent zone, the down channel, and it's holding nicely above it. I I have to just go with the charts, and I'm going with the chart. The charts is saying, you know what? Semiconductors are still holding pretty well. Question. Uh, is it now important to look at the weekly charts since the dailies have done what you wanted? Yes, we'll do that to my case. Basel chapter does of 259. SPs up 34. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just, uh, I was talking about the gold, I was talking about the GDX. Uh, uh, a question that Dan, uh, GW says, about to look at the wave count in the JNUG. That's uh, JNUG is the uh, uh, DX. This is the gold miners bull. So is this two, I think it's two times uh, uh, long uh, bull, yeah. I, I think it's two times, no, it's uh, DX is junior. Doesn't give you a number. Usually they give you a number. So that, yes, that is in leg D. And if you do a left side, right side price time match, you couldn't do one to the exact low. Well, I guess you could, but it, it would miss visually. I do both visually and uh, technically. And that just said from the left side low of the bar, and this is what I'm going to be teaching. How can you, how do you just 
You, if you don't have the ability to draw a cup, it doesn't matter. I mean, I do it because it's, it's there. Trade Station has it. Some uh, uh, some uh, platforms don't have it. They have everything else, but they don't have a, a semicircle. This is actually a quarter. This is the quarter of a semicircle, a quarter circle. So what I do, you could do this. You could go straight line down. It's it, and you, in your mind, you're saying this should be a cup. It doesn't matter. And then you do your right side. Well, the right side goes from the, ch the, the bar that I chose, and I have a specific way for subscribers. that they, They've learned this particular pattern, and people who've done my webinars, what candle to choose for your Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. I usually make it green dash, but this I'm making it gray so that you can actually see it. Then that tells you, that it would have been to that bar right there on the 2nd of August at 37.49. Well, we went to the left side high. I chose this particular candle, and I'll, I'll also teach you what, which candles to use on the left side. If there are no peaks or troughs, how can you choose a candle? So I chose this particular one with a high of 38.64, uh, so it was a tad under it, but it also meant that the cup formation had moved the, the plumb line. Very simple. It should have been at the low with a doji candle low. Well, it, it, it looked lopsided as if it was going to be very difficult to do. So then there's another candle that you can use. And I'll teach which one to use so that you can tell. And that says it should go. There's a target, a rising target to the 3950s. But we're not close to it. Yeah, we're getting close to it right now. But most importantly is in time, the candle that I chose is the plumb line. We've got there today and we're a little bit higher. Now we're starting to tackle the next candle, which is the candle of the 28th of June in the JNUG, which is at 41.06. Okay, now let's just do a couple of things. Um, uh, yes, love the inside wedge track. That, that, that's very, it's a really helpful trend line if you're able to get it. Uh, in the den, Labu, a teenager, L-A-B-U, but that's also the IBB, right? The IBB, I like that. I mentioned it this morning that it's acting really well. We aren't in it. I did want to get into it, uh, but we've been in other positions. I'll talk about that in a moment. There's no other way that I can talk to you about my webinar without talking about positions. I don't like to do that because I, 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 this is the only, I, I'm not superstitious, but the only thing I have is this hubris that, that the market elves are just waiting there for you to show a little bit of uh, egotism and they just sit there waiting and then they wag their finger and say, don't do it, and you do it. And the moment you take your hands off to, to pat yourself on the back, you hit the tree. So I'm always a little afraid to do that, but there's no other way that I can't show you uh, the success we've had based on the Chapman Wave methodology. So I had drawn in all these patterns, but we just didn't get it because we've had other positions. But look at this beautiful dreaded H pattern that was successful. Then it became a cup formation, which was successful. We did start along at 123 back in July. Uh, it's straightened out at 132, but we got taken out for a, just a sudden pullback, and then it did everything we wanted it to do. And there's another little H pattern with a cup formation, and now it's broken out. And the longer, the bigger trend says 135.57, the high, around about the beginning of April, end of uh, March. Uh, that's the target here, and we're at 133.14, and it's got another three or four days to go based on this particular pattern, left side, right side, bar symmetry. Okay, I hope that helps you. Next question I had was uh, the weekly. I, I'm going to get to the weekly in a moment. Okay, so let me, oh, man, I have to do this because I've got a webinar coming up. People need to know, is there a success rate? I mean, what are you, what are you doing? How, why would we even want to take it if we have... Anybody could say, how do you how do you this and how do you that? What have you done for me lately? So the diamonds, we've been long the diamonds since the day of the low. We've had them. We've, we've taken profits. We got back in a whole bunch of things that we've constantly been long. And now we're still long and it's gone from our entry point in the diamonds. That's the downtime. We still have the core position from the low of 23rd of March, 2020. Taking a little great profits off that, but still kept the chunk. Now, in the shorter term, we've got a new position, and the new position is uh, at uh, 306.98, and here we are at 330.37. Beautiful, beautiful uh, again, and we're now at E. This is where we're getting, we've taken two little bits off. This is where we're getting a little bit cautious, I haven't taken anything off today, but this is saying to me the choppiness that I'm anticipating for this week, despite 
the uh, the new bill that just gave money out and the, and the market loves that idea, at least in initially, uh, this is leg E, this is where we're getting a little bit cautious. So we, we, we're long. The next thing is, we, we're long, oh, all right, I have to talk about it, the TQQ, three, three times long, the QQQ. One of the reasons is my, my analysis was that in this particular phase, we had the ARQQ, ARKK, that was Kathy Wood, her uh, innovation fund for in the 37th degree, really nice profits in that. But I didn't know when to get back in. And I thought that the best thing is to be a, a more general with the Qs because there are so many stocks in the QQQ, uh, NDX 100, that are just so over, oversold that they have upside action. So we've been in that, it's gone to a leg E, we're in, in two positions. One is at um, a split start at 27.50 back on the 18th of uh, July. And then another one, uh, a second, and we've taken little bits off, little, little bits off all the way. Um, uh, we did the same thing on Friday at the open. So we've had up to really huge gains in, in that 30%. We've got a 40% uh, gain in, in the uh, other position that was started at 25.84. Uh, at and here we are at 36.48. This is a three times long position. I am now in the position where I'm going to, I'm saying to subscribers, whoa, wait a minute. We want the, a really sharp pullback because we want to get into the core QQQ and the core semiconductor SMHs because the risk now for the percentage on any pullback with the premium gets taken out, now you're going to start to see that. At least I'm anticipating this week you start to see that. So fabulous, fabulous gains. Next thing we've got is Bank of America. Bank of America, we have every year, and we try to ride it all the way up, and then we get out of it on the way down, and, uh, and we've been out of it for the longest position it did 50.11. We were in at the 30-something area. And now, 31, I think it was. And now we've got back in, and we're in at a 30... Where did I write that? Good grief. Oh, we are in Bank of America. We're along 32.61 on the 19th of July. And it's at 33.72. It's acting okay. This is really not acting well. It's acting just okay. Same with the XLF. I don't mention the XLF lately because I think that's lagging. And I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. I don't ignore laggers. CF is one that we got into. We got into it, we lost two points just because it, it just pulled back to our stop and then we got back in in the uh, 95 area and today it hit our target of 102. Our target has been 101.71. Um, that was the left side high back in early June. We've got to that. Today we hit leg D. That was what we wanted at 102.39. Um, I'll be back. Basil Chap, take it to the next hour. Basil Football. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, we're back. So let me just say CF Industries Holdings Inc. Hydrogen, Nitrogen Products, Clean Energy, Fertilizer, Emissions Abatement, it fits all the criteria of this particular moment, but it's still a chart pattern we're looking at. So it went to D, it went to D. Look at this exact plumb line. This is a technique that I teach from the left side, number of bars. It's an exact number of bars to the right side if you choose the bar that I chose as the plumb line low. Even though it made a jetted H and went to a low, slightly lower on the 14th of July at 79.18, I still drew this in for many reasons. And then I drew a left side, I drew the Chapman Wave inside wedge, as someone in the den said, what did they say? They said, uh, uh, love the inside wedge track. Very helpful trend line, yes. So that went to the, it, it's actually, that particular trend line is a day late, but not the left side, right side price time match. Today was the day that it should have made D, and it did it, and I said to subscribers, some opening call, I said, uh, number four is CF trading at 100, one split lot, okay. and then it says needs 102.22 for a new leg D. We got that leg D. Where did D come in? And in a leg A in the weekly chart, but right in the Chapman wave. And usually I change the colors here, but this wasn't important because we were under it. Now it's very important because we hit it. So I change this and I just make it. You don't have to have these colors. I do the colors so that you can see it very nicely. And this says, Within the context of a cup formation or Chapman Wave falling acts, lower highs and much lower lows, and then it forms a base. That's a technique that I teach. You can see a rally towards the trend line and how it breaks that trend line. If it does, it's going to be really important. So it's met the first criteria. Now we have to do an analysis to see what's the next set of criteria that we have for CF Industries. We've had DBA. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. DBA is the uh, DB Agricultural Fund since the 13s, at least for two years. It's hit the 23, uh, 23 level. We've taken quite a lot off. We've got the core position, and I'm just wondering, do we still keep it? This is the fertilizer. This has got, I mean, this has got the agricultural stocks, wheat, corn, uh, soybean, sugar, and it's just stalling here. And is it a stalling to break out to a new rally? Well, it's stuck in a rectangle formation. I don't have to make decisions on it now. Either we're going to get out or we'll add. We'll see. I don't have to do anything right now. Um, we've got, as I said, the GDX. We just started positioning the GDX. It's acting nicely. It's done quite well, but only quite well. It's nothing great at this particular point. And then in the den, we had GDXJ, uh, GDXJ. Yes, uh, GDXJ, one of our denners, uh, was talking about that just the other day, saying, hey, that's way stronger than the GDX. And lo and behold, this has gone to a leg E. Uh, it's way ahead in the notation and in the price. That's the juniors. So congratulations to our, den our den denner uh, who chose this. And look at this left side cup formation. And I will be talking about this in my webinar. What we should do is it, is it, is it a tradable position? What should we do? 
uh, is it showing us that the juniors are actually leading it, that the others might have to follow? It's just a bunch of things. So that's the GDXJ. We are along the GDX. IAI, we missed our entry point to get into it because I said we've got to have, I had a whole list of what we wanted on, on the big major sell-off that was unfolding, why we went along all these different positions because I wanted to have a mix of certain uh, sectors. We missed the entry on the IAI by 30 cents or something, and then it just took off without us. We do have it from 45 back in the 24th of March, 2020, but that's a history of the dam for those people who never got in. And here it is at uh, 94.88 and touching the 200 period, just about to touch the leg C, touching the 200 period moving average. This is important, the iShares broker deal and security ETF. So I'm kind of kind of stuck because of what we want to do there. We are long NFE. NFE is what? I always have to say what because I have to actually always remember what the name is. I, know, I remember the symbol very well, obviously, because we are long. But I just, the name, it was new to me. New Fortress Energy Inc. A shares natural gas fuel solutions. Why? Because I like what's going on in the natural gas area. There's a beautiful cup formation in the weekly. Uh, we got long at, uh, what did we get long at? Um, NF. We got long at 4551, 26th of July. And here it is at 5152. Really nice gain. And it's not the gains, it's just that I wanted to be in the right sectors. And I think, you know, in a way, we've, we've picked up in the sectors that are working. I said, I don't want sectors that could be good, and then we sit there waiting. I want sectors that are working, that are going to make us money as quickly as possible. It did a left side, a right side price tie match in the first part of the cup formation to that peak B perfectly. Then it took its time, and now it's stalling. But I've got a Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line that says, by the... Uh, 11th of August, the 52.76 level should be hit. 52.37 was the high back in July the 7th and uh, June the 7th, and then it plummeted down to 36. I mean, that's a huge decline. And now it's made a beautiful cup formation back again. So, yes, we are long from the 45.51 area. And uh, here it is doing very nicely. It's up six points. That's a, that's a very nice gain. But it's also that it's the right area, natural gas, at least at this particular time. Um, then, of course, we did. I told you about the semiconductors, uh, SMHs. And we belong via the SOXL. And I think this is going to be under pressure right now uh, because that 200 period moving average is becoming a bit of a repellent. But we have taken some profits. We might have to just do that again and re-enter. Maybe I'll get that opportunity if I'm still very keen on getting to the semiconductors getting the SMH rather than two times or three times long, just to get in something standard and give it a little bit of room. Um, let's see. And a position we wanted today, I did a bunch of things on, on my overview. In fact, you don't just get my newsletter and you don't get the webinars, all the previous webinars, what, 9, 10, 11 of them, that go through all these different uh, patterns, but I've refined it for this particular one to very, very specific things to make it just as easy as possible to do in the environment we're in. I always like to do a webinar that says, what are the chart patterns that we're going to be looking at for the next two, three months? Because that's what you want to be looking at. You know, we're looking at something that either is going down when the market's going up or going up when the market's down. But if it starts to get choppy, which I think we're going to get into, um, that's going to be important. So the, the, I'll get to that question in a minute. Uh, let's see, uh, your courts. No, I don't need my, my tennis uh, schedule right now. Uh, a chart never lies. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, this stock has been manhandled by Wall Street inside it. You know, Paul, you're 100% correct. I'm absolutely not going to argue with you. But it's also what happens next because how does it handle? I just, from my eye, NVIDIA is still... It's not one we even wanted to have. It's done the cup pattern beautifully here. It, it failed to get to the left side high of, of 196.05, I think it was. And now it's pulling back sharply. Yeah, this is not one of those. You, I, I do agree with you. But that doesn't mean to say the whole semiconductor sec sector has to do that. So let me show you some things. In, in my newsletter, I have a screamer section where every once in a while we get a, a price, a stock that's in the, in the single digits. And on, on, on my webinar, uh, not my webinar, my video, every weekend I do about a 45 minute to an hour long uh, video with the different charts, what we're looking at, all the stuff that I'm talking about now, this is kind of what we do. And I had AEVA.
A as a potential, but it has already made a peak E, a beautiful left side, right side price time match. So I said, you know what, let's just leave that for now. CHS, which is Chico's, women's fashion. Oh, that was the one that just soared today. I said, this looks good. I'm not sure why, but it's in C and it's screened. It's up six, there's 7% today. And the one we missed was NKLA. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I can do it. Uh, folks, we're back and we were looking at, uh, so a question came into the den about XBI, which is the S&P Biotech Fund. You remember, I, it, it, the, the IBB is the one that I like. The XBI is the S&P Biotech Fund. They're actually a little bit different. I think this one also has some of the, 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 the pharmaceuticals. So I did the notation here. I, I'll, maybe I can go into it tomorrow. But look, the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance. Now, you see this line right here? Look what happens. The reason why I, I always admire the, the, the tenacity of these trend lines is when I used to hand chart and then I'd forget about something and all of a sudden I'd look at the chart and suddenly the, the trend line that I drew in ages ago is now becoming important. Look at this. If I extend this to the right, uh, based on, oh, come on, come on, extend to the right. Look at that. It went almost to, this is the trend line you saw just a moment ago. Look at that trend line that started way back in May. Look at that trend line, how it's all, we, we, we were in pennies of leg D. 
So that's an important thing. It's acting well. So a couple of things that I wanted to do. Don't forget, folks, we've got Steve Rhodes coming up for uh, his show in the next hour. And then we've got, um, we've got, uh, then, then, then there's Think or Swim. Then you've got Larry doing Steve's show. And then you've got Dave White, uh, Dave White and Tom. Have I got that right? Yes. Larry, is, um, Dave White, and then Tom finishes up. And don't forget, I've got my webinar coming up this week from, uh, was right, it's coming to Wednesday. So let's keep that in mind. And the other question I had, the reason why I got a little confused there is we've got, we have a caller. Oh, we have a caller. Jeff, Jeff, oh, what's your question? Is that for me? Uh, Jeff and Philly, question about shorting iron. Yeah, I don't know where you, iron, oh, iron condors. No, I can't do that right now. I guess that's not a question. So, folks, uh, you've got, uh, I'll do the news hour right now, and then you've got Steve Rhodes coming up. Uh, Basil Chapman signing off. Check out my opening call uh, 